Hello! Welcome to my studio. I'm Julie Torrens. I'm so glad you're here. What you're looking at is a little still life that I put together and I'm going to try to paint that. So I'm going to move you and now you're going to see a little bit of what I see when I sit at my desk. And there's a light that I made that helps light up my work area. And now let's take a look at my desk. And there we go. So I'm going to be hooking you up. There you go. Little wiggly, sorry. <laughs> little adjusting. And bring you back a little. Maybe I could bring you a little bit closer. Okay. We'll give it a try. Thanks for taking that ride with me. Okay, I'm gonna sit down here and let's see what we've got. Well, I went ahead and just took a plain number two pencil and I drew in what I'm going to turn into this first painting. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a painting that I can eventually do larger on a larger substrate, but I just feel like I need to practice a little bit first. And this is not obviously photorealism. I, I want this to be kind of primitive. I want, I'm, I'm not looking for teeny tiny detail, but I still want it interesting and recognizable. So I've got a handful of my uh, that was my water jars, some Liquitex acrylics, and this is just some of them. I have more, and as I grab colors, I'll tell you what they are. I've got some acrylic brushes. I've got, this is what I'm going to be using as a palette. I like using these because they're, they're waxed, and so the paint doesn't want to sink in, and I have two of them here, and if I decide to take a break, I can just mist it with my water and put this on top, and that'll hold it for a while. So, um, or if I need to, I can always grab another plate, but I do like using these for small paintings like this. So I'm just gonna set it up here for now, but I know I'm trying to keep it from casting a shadow. So I hope you're doing well. I hope that this is something that might interest you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by thinking what I want for these walls. Now this is, it was inspired by my blinds that cover my patio door. And then I just <laughs> laid a window in here because I thought once I put those in, it kind of looked like drapes, really. And I thought, okay, well, you know, this will be fine. Um, again, it's just mm, a representation, but I want to give it a try. Have I ever done anything like this? Not for years, but it's time. So, okay, wall color. What do I want as that wall color? And you know, I can always start and then, you know, change it up. Let's start out with, this is burnt umber, which almost looks like brown. I'm gonna put some of that on my palette. And then I'm going to have on my palette, I'm gonna give it, mm, I wanna warm it up a little bit. This is uh, cadmium yellow medium, and it's a hue. This one is light, I believe, yes. I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna put that here. And I'm going to put some white because white is always handy. So I've got some titanium white. Just have to find it, sorry. I know it's here. Nothing's easy when you're trying to record. Here it is. And I'm just gonna put this white up here because I, I'm gonna be using it for other things as well. Okay, let's get started. I've got two waters, one for the beginning rinse and the second for the other rinse. And when I'm doing acrylics, I'm not quite as worried about color on top of color or contamination. This is, this is a lot different than watercolor. 
And I just grabbed a variety of brushes, paper towel. All right, let's get going. And already I can see, I think I want a, a square brush, but not quite as large as what I have. So let's see if I have a smaller, this one might be awfully soft, but we'll, yeah, no, too soft. It, I need a brush that's got a little bit more firmness. This one's a little too small. So far, these are my, my choices. <laughs> so, but no, I'll just start with this one and, and I've got a smaller one if I feel like I need it. All right, wetting my brush because I don't want the paint to just sink straight into the brush because you're just kind of wasting paint that way. And I'm gonna take a little of this brown and a little of this yellow and see what we get. Now, if the yellow is leaning towards maybe bluish, it could turn into kind of a green color, but no. It's just kind of a brownish color, which is good. And I think I'm gonna just go ahead and grab a little white. And I'm gonna start painting. And it's not completely mixed and I don't care. So I'm just gonna start putting in this basic wall color. And I hope you can see, I think you can. And here. I kind of like these, the texture that I'm getting. So I don't want to scrub it all kinds of different ways, but let the texture just kind of speak for itself. I, I like it. Okay. And then under here, we've got some of this wall color. And again, I'm not worried like, oh, I'm, I'm getting into the, the tablecloth-y thing. No, I, it's acrylic, so it'll go on top of each other. And putting it down here, that's a table leg. Now I'm going to I'm going to mix a little bit more. I'm using all the yellow, a little bit of the brown, a little more, and a little more of the white. A little more brown. And again, I I don't want to just like run the color all together, but I can tell I've got an awful lot. I'm just grabbing some brown because I've got an awful lot of yellow there. Let's just see what this does. Yeah, that's fine. And come down the wall here. More yellow, like I said, I, I could tell I had an awful lot of yellow. Going back into the brown. Now, this could turn out to be a disaster, and I don't care, because it's a practice. I'm just working in my journal, and I'm gonna learn. I'm definitely gonna learn. I'm gonna put some of this here. And now I've hit those areas that I think are awfully small. That put a lot of yellow there. That's all right. It's all okay. Okay, I'm going to grab that other brush. And I'm going to see if I can even just get some of this paint off of here. Why not? I'm going to set this brush aside, but I'm going to kind of keep it in my mind because I, I don't want it to, to completely dry out and get hard. And let's see... I'm going to be going around these grapes and this fruit, heading into some more of that paint, and again around the fruit. I've got a little bit of wall showing here. Okay, I think I have all the walls. Mm-hmm. Got an awful lot of paint there. I'm just gonna pick it up. I think I'm gonna add it over here where this seems 
a little bit on the dark side. We'll bring this a little closer to the table. Okay. All right. I'm good with that. I'm going to just square this up a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I'm putting both brushes in the water and giving them a good rinse off. And while I'm doing that, the one cloth, this one, has lots of color. I'm going to hold off on it. I do have my Stabilo all pencils nearby and I may use them because they can mix with the acrylic just fine. So I may just save that and I'm just giving my brushes the second rinse. Okay, this cloth is kind of a gray taupey color with a teal on it and the cup is kind of pinkish magenta tones. The grapes are like red grapes. There's a lemon. There's a red apple. This is a green pear. And there's another green apple here. And there's, well, you really can't see this in, in person, but we'll turn it into an apple or an orange or something. All right. So I think I'm going to start putting just a gray tone in here. So I've got some ivory black that I want very little of. Can I set this somewhere? Very, very little. I mean, that might be too much. And then I'm gonna scoop in some of this white. Now, let me see, did I get the bottom of this a little bit? I'm just gonna grab one of these to set it on because I don't need to have that all over my table. Okay. So I think this brush to start again, and then that other brush, if I want to finish it up, but I'm going to grab some of this white again and go into this black. And I'm going to go into the brown. It's like I said, it's kind of a taupey color. And I think that looks, it's a good way to start. We'll just see. If I don't like it, I can always paint on top. So this kind of goes like this. Now for this part, I'm not so much worried about whether I get the, the lines of the different colors of paint or not. I mean, if they're there, they're beautiful, but I am gonna be doing different brush strokes and things. So now I'm up against that floor. Well, it's, it's fruit. It's more fruit. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this right on top of that wall. And then just bring this up. And again, bring this over that wall. And then this is where it kind of waterfalls over the edge of the table right here. Now it hangs over here. You can see that. And then I'm going to bring this here. And again, going on top of these fruits and things is fine. I'm just, you can have that guideline. But the fruit needs to be on top, right? So eventually, the fruit should overcome this tablecloth color. I'm going to stick with my bigger brush and go right in here. The bigger the brush you have, the less control, and then you get a more kind of a primitive, organic feel, which is what I would really like. I really want that. So I'm going to bring this here. Then I may bring my smaller brush into the picture a little more. 
Now you can see I'm not adding a lot of water. I don't want this paint to be thin. I'm not doing watercolor. This is acrylics. So, okay. Again, I'm going to set my brush aside. I'm going to grab that little brush and I'm going to try to come up with that same combo or similar enough. So I'm going to use the white. And I think I used up all the black. A little bit of this brown. But I got to put some black on there. Okay. Here's the black. And I'm just giving it a dot. Because black is strong. And let's mix this up. Get the black going in there. I'm going to add just a little more of the brown. And I think we've about got it. And let's do some more of this first tablecloth. Okay. So I'm going to kind of tighten up these edges. You really don't see the color of this tablecloth through the clear bowl. You'd think you might, but I don't see it, so I'm not putting it in there. Back getting by this fruit and get close up to that fruit. Getting closer to this bowl. And I would like the line to kind of be the same going from here to here to here. So I need to bring this up a little bit. And there. I'm going to bring this out a little bit. I'm just kind of filling in. Okay. Liking it, liking it, liking it. Bringing in this closer to the cover that's got the fruit in it. Okay. I'm not even going to clean my brush. I'm going straight into the burnt umber. And I'm just going to fill in these two legs. These are the legs of that table. And really what they are is they're the divider because this is not really a table table. It's an end table, but they don't know that. <laughs> Okay, so I've blocked in the walls. I've blocked in the table um, with its cover. And I think I'm going to do the windowsill. Okay, I'm not introducing any more new colors, but I just may put in some colors that I haven't that and I'm but I'm not going to um what am I trying to say like the yellow I've mixed it in colors but I don't have just the plain yellow um now I did mix the burnt sienna but I also used it plain on the legs of the table thing so maybe I do, do need a different color I'm looking at my it's kind of a dark color I'm looking at what would be behind my, I'm in my real life, this is those window shades, but in my make-believe life, the, it, the, what, what it frames is dark, even darker than this. Do I want to go black? Maybe. Okay, I'm going to grab the black, and 
I'm going to just add a dot to this, and this is that burnt sienna. I'm going to add a dot to that, and then we're going to mix that up. And again, strong. I'll tell you, one dot of this black and a gallon of white paint, you will never have white paint again. Never. It is so strong. It will just take over. Okay, so I've got this burnt sienna. There's a little yellow in it. There's, a, But I added that black. And I'm just kind of lifting it right up and turning it over with my brush because I want that black in there. Okay, I'm going to start with the big brush and see where we get. Now, I know this is a lot of kind of neutral colors. I am aware. You know they're not my favorite. But the fruit and the other, the, well, eat both cloths, they're going to be more in the foreground. And so I want that to be where I'm going to add some punches of color. So if this seems a little bit dull and nondescript, I'm okay with that. I really am. Okay, I'm going to grab that smaller brush and I'm putting that right in the water. Same color. And I'm going to just fill this in. And these brushes are not perfect. I don't care. For acrylic, like I said, I like that kind of a primitive, kind of a kind of an organic feel, not, not an exact thing. Now and bring this right here between the two candlesticks and then the drapes start. Okay, so we've got the windowsill. This is really quite out there. Let's see if we can straighten it up a little bit. I like that better. We've got a windowsill. We've got everything. How about the these drapes? I'm going to put those lines in there, but I'm thinking that I want them and give this a rinse. You gotta, you gotta do the business of life as well. You can't just hold your brushes in the air and think they're gonna clean themselves. <laughs> Hasn't happened to me yet. And look, this is my first water. Can you see how muddy it is? But this is my second rinse. And see how clear, that's why it is worth it. I see so many artists using just one, and I I don't know how they do it. They do fine, I, but I just feel like I would be jumping up and changing my water again and again, and I still get contamination. So, okay. So what are we going to work on next? I am trying to work kind of from the back to the front, and again, the cup most up front. These next up front, this spoon up front, this very up front, um, these kind of with the candlestick. This is going to be a window seen out there. And then, like I said, these drapes. So I think the next thing I want to put is the drapes. Okay. Well, I think I want them mostly white with a touch eventually of maybe just some shadowy stripey things so i've got this white and it's got a little brown in there i'm going to go ahead and mix this gray color in here and then lay this in but to tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind if this was just a little bit more homogenized, not seeing all the stripes of all the different colors. So I'm giving it a good mix. So it's obviously not snow white. And let's just see what we get with this. I like it. I'm, I'm really liking it. 
So it's going around the candelabra thing. And this is just blocking in like the first layer of color that I'm going to have on these drapes. And I think I'm going to grab that smaller brush to get this little space in here and maybe a little bit down. I'm going to go ahead and like I did before and just grab some of this paint right off of this brush. Put that in the water and fill this in. I'm, is my head in the way? I'm sorry if it is. I hope if you're not doing an acrylic painting with me, I hope you're doing some art. Are you working in your sketchbook? Are you working on an art journal page? What's going on in your art life, crafting life? I truly am interested. I am happy with how few of colors and I don't consider white and black a color, but I think that can make a painting sweeter when you're not just picking all kinds of colors willy nilly, especially right away. Okay, so I don't even know if I wanna rinse this. I'm not happy with the bottom of this edge of this window, and I'm just gonna add a little more in there. Okay, I, I like that better. All right, now, hmm, it's gonna be time to add some colors. All right, let's rinse this out. And this one's just been soaking. I'll rinse him out. We've got heavy cloud cover and a drizzly rain, which in a way it's it's the grass loves it, the plants love it. It's it's a good thing. It really is. I mean, does it make for a happy day? You know what? That's kind of up to us, isn't it? We can choose to be miserable or we can choose to be happy. I choose happy. I hope you do too. All right. Brushes are cleared out. I'm seeing a little space and I'm going to go back into this color where I want to get it a little bit closer. And that stuff is getting dry already. So that's okay. I don't need that much. there yeah that's fine that'll work out just fine kind of seeing another spot i'm gonna add a touch of brown because this is awfully light and i saw in here it looks like the wall is on top of the cloth and the cloth should be in front of the wall so that's why I added that a little bit. And then I'm going to add, you can see just a little of where this overlap. So that's going to kind of be like, did she do it? Is it the drapes? Is it the, we won't know. doesn't matter. All right. Rinsing out, rinsing out. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to need to introduce some more colors. However... Maybe I'm rushing it because I've got these candlesticks. Hmm. I've got this brown. And I'm going to add a color. I'm going to add... Um, this is a magenta, but it's violet. I don't want that one. Quadac... Quadac... Oh, 
quinacridone magenta. I'm going to add that to this brown. And maybe it'll give me kind of a mahogany flavor. I'm not sure, but we're going to give it a try. What do you say? I think I want a different brush. I'm going to... Now, I was looking for just a little bit of a bigger... This might do. I'm going to use this. Okay. Mixing up the brown with the magenta. Giving it a good mix. A little bit more of that. It's burnt umber. I'm calling it brown, but it's burnt umber. Let's just go with what we've got here and see what it looks like, okay? And... I like it just fine. Going around the cup handle here. May have to get that smaller brush. I feel like I am trying too hard. I don't want to lose that organic feel I don't want to lose that at all okay all right a little more paint Sorry, concentrating and then I get too quiet, which can make for a boring video, can't it? So yeah, we're having rain, but I think it's a good thing because we want some lush plants in our June and July. We don't want everything just dry like the desert, which it can get. So, I am not complaining. We need to have that for our fresh plants. People just put their flower beds in not that long ago, and they can use this. And we're having cool nights, which grass loves that. But grass likes sun, but so far the grass has not been suffering, so... So we're okay there. Okay. This is getting a little bit hard for me to see because I'm so close. But right now, I'm not really sure how else I can bring a video and show you what I'm doing. Because if I'm going to start working on my easel, that's going to be a whole different setup of lighting and videoing. And it's in my future. That, that's my plan, but right now, I'm still getting used to this platform, and it takes more than, more technical skill than, than I really have. <laughs> Not ashamed to say it. Okay, now. How is this looking? I think this one needs a little more coming out here. Well, what are you thinking? Let me know in the comments. I need your comments. I really do. They're so encouraging and they help my channel because YouTube sees it as interaction and engagement 
and then it will help promote my videos. I feel like my channel is growing at a decent pace, but of course I'm impatient. <laughs> How are we doing here? I think this needs to be a little wider. Now, if your acrylics feel like they're drying too fast for you, you can mist them with a little water, but you got to be careful with that. You can also get a product that will keep what they call open. They will keep your paints fluid longer. You can also get acrylic just right in the tubes, and that's exactly what they're designed to be, is to just stay open longer. I'm just using the regular Liquitex Professional Acrylic in a Tube. These are not the basic. The basics can be fine, but I wanted the I wanted to use the the professional. I'm sorry if my head's getting in here, but what I have is some shine when the paint's wet, and then I really can't always see what's happening. Okay, we're getting there. Now, am I gonna get this done with you watching? I don't know, I doubt it. But I think we'll get a good start, and then we can even have another video of where I'm you know, attempting some more details, or maybe I'll just figure I'm kinda done and, and I need to start another one. I'm sorry, I'm clinking my, my glasses but the magenta in this is really strong so I want to get that out of that brush okay okay this has all these colors and it's fruit so there's some purples there's some greens there's you know because there's avocados and tomatoes and oranges and all that kind of stuff are we going to get all that in there no but we're going to get the color we're going to get color this is where the color needs to come in. So, first it needs a background color, which is white. So, I've got this going, and I think I'm gonna add some more white to it. That white is so hard to find. I don't know why I have such a struggle finding it. Titanium white, it's in my hand. Okay, and I'm going to put it right here. And this is the color that I used for the drapes. I've got a string. There we go. String of paint that just wasn't letting go. Okay, and I'm going to add... Hmm. Let's just mix it up and see what it looks like. What do you say? That just might be fine because I want it to say white without being white like a piece of bond paper. So down she goes. I'm just blocking in some of this white background all the way off the page. Now here around the cup and the spoon, which I may need to just kind of cover up the spoon because it's going to be too hard to paint around. But I still have my setup and I can drew it in once, I can draw it in again. Okay. Oh, picked up some of that brown. <laughs> That's okay. I can see it on my brush and I'm just going to knock some of that off. Get cut into this again. And that's fine. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh, Julie, Julie, Julie. Okay. I'm going to rinse this out. And I'm going to start adding some of these colors in. 
Now I'm going to start with one of the more back fruits. And this one is a red. But it is where this is like a corally red. I would call this a warm red. I want it to be more of a cool red, like it has a little more blue in it, more like an American flag red. So I'm going to put some of this on, and I've got that magenta. I'm trying to get it so you can see. So I'm going to put, oh, let's get the dried paint off. I'll just otherwise just struggle and struggle with it. So just a little bit of this. That's plenty. And now I'm going to add some of this. I'm not going to, I'm going to make a new area. Add some of this magenta. What do I think? I got to bring it to my face. Yeah, okay, this will be fine. I'm going to start with that apple right here. And I'm going to add just, I'm just taking my brush and I'm going to go right into this yellow. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this yellow, making a little circle with it. Now I'm going to clean my brush off, just, just putting it on the dry paper towel. And now I'm going to just kind of work it around like in a kind of a starbursty pattern. And this is kind of where the, the little flower of the apple is. Okay, I'm going back into my apple color. Okay. Okay. I like that just fine. Rinsing out my brush. And I want to make a very yellowy green for this one pear. Now. These two brushes can go up here for a minute. I want a green. This is emerald green. So you know what that's gonna be like. That's gonna be a brilliant green. So I'm just gonna add, again, a touch. Because again, these paints are strong. And I'm gonna add this now, which of these is the lighter? Light. And this is the cadmium yellow light. And I'm going to add yellow. Probably have enough to do an entire peck of, <laughs> of pears, but let's just go with it. And that's fine. Let's see what it looks like on my pear. What do you think? What do you think of that color? I like it. I'm answering my own question, but I do like it. And you know, I've got kind of a, a green apple here, but this, I really can't see it in real life. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and put it here behind these grapes. Who's to say that's not what's there? And I'm really getting into the grapes because I want the grapes to go on top. Get a little more of this. So again, I'm being generous with the green. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put some leaves with this same green on here. Just willy-nilly random leaves. For those of you who have hung in with me this long, thank you so much. I hope it's because you're liking what you see. Maybe it's something you'd consider doing. But, you know, this is my joy. This kind of art journal fun. It really is. Now, I'm not even looking at that cloth. I'm just putting in some leaves because they're just joyful and cheerful and I like them. And really, when I set this up, what I wanted these different cloths to do is just speak of pattern, but not necessarily that that's exactly what I'm going to be drawing or painting. Do you know what I mean? I don't, never planned on having these be some type of an exact, not at all. But it just says pattern and that's what I want. And so I'm just starting a pattern on this tablecloth. All right, I really like that. Okay, now, this has gotten even darker green. I, you know, like lifted into the green a little more. I'm gonna go ahead and put this other green apple in here. And if it's not green enough, I can always make it darker. It's, that's not a problem. And the most upfront piece of fruit is this lemon. So, let's see about that lemon. I'm going to rinse this brush out, double rinse. And I'm going to grab this other color, which is the cadmium medium. And I'm going to try to open it. There we go. And put some of this on my palette. Not much. And I'll show you, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but it will be different. Here's where I put that little dot, and there's the lighter color of yellow. So I'm just going right into this as is. And I am laying in the lemon. The lemon is in front of this apple. And the other fruit is kind of lifting it where it's not in the bottom of the bowl. So I'm gonna to have to just kind of pick a shadowy color that's gonna go in all these little creeks and crevices. And then at the very top, I'll add the clear bowl itself.
And I was pretty surprised, but the, the glass bowl that it's in did not kind of distort as much as I would have thought. All right. I've got this yellow and I've got this green. And before I let that completely dry out, I'm going to add some of this in this window. I'm just going to block in. And I've got every kind of a shade going on, which is perfect. Just let the paint do the work. Some kind of a tree-like thing going on here. Now the curtains are in front, so I got to keep this behind. And if I've got to redo the curtains, oh, and redo the, I will. But I'm just getting some of this green in the window blocked in. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to just add some of it like this in here. I'm just putting it up to the windowsill, but trying not to have it go over the windowsill. There. Okay. Just the start of that. Okay. Grapes. Those are a real purpley red. I've got some purple. And this is called Dioxine Purple. Let's put some of that on this palette here. But I want very little. Like that. We're getting it like, it's, it's like that black, you know. I'm going to add some of the color I can never find, Titanium White. That's black. Boy, I should just like set it somewhere else, like in another room so that I can find it. Here we go. Titanium white. Don't need much. And a reddish purplish. I'm going to go with this magenta. Let's see what these three do for me and see if I can block in some of these grapes. So I've got some white here. I've got magenta and then that dioxazine, dioxazine purple. And I'm just going to start tapping in these grapes. That looks like a fine grape color to me. Tapping into the magenta and the purple. I might be better off with a round brush because grapes are round. And I'm almost feeling like I'm getting more of an oval shape than a round shape. But, you know, I'm just going to keep going. See what happens here. <laughs> sometimes I'm dragging into the purple more, sometimes I'm dragging into the magenta more because the light is just playing all kinds of ways over these grapes. So they, they are quite the variety of color, which is cool. Oh, I went into a, I went into the color that, I think it was the apple color. It's all right. How am I doing?
I don't know that you can see it, but the white is showing up from time to time. It almost is like adding a sparkle. I like these grapes. I really do. I think they look fantastic. My voice got loud, even to me. Okay. I'm liking that. I'm liking that really good. Okay, so in the remainder of the bowl, any place that I can see where there's like no fruit, just air, and the glass, I'm just going to mix up some kind of a shadow color. I like purple in a, in a shadow color, so I'm just going to move this purple around a little bit, and I'm going to add the ever so slightly bit of black to it ever so slightly. I touched it to the my plate here, but I'm just going to touch my brush in it and add it to there. That is probably enough. And I'm just going to add some of this into the little spaces between the fruit as kind of a shadow color. What's that doing for you? Because honestly, I'm probably got my head in the frame. I'm sorry. Because honestly, I'm so close that you can see, I would guess, better than me. Okay. All right. Cup. <laughs> I am going to take this purple because I'm really enjoying it. Try to find that titanium white. And, you know, I've got a lot of titanium white right here. Watch what this purple does. Look at that. And it's just what was left on my brush. And can you see how dark? That's black. This is the purple, just a touch. And I'm using this as the beginning of my mug. Now, in reality, it's pink. It's um, a breast cancer awareness mug that I got that gave money to charity years ago. I wish I could say we don't need these charities anymore for breast cancer, but <laughs> ladies, it's your mammogram. So we've got the purple mug. Now, if I make the inside of the mug darker, it's going to look probably like there's something in it. Well, you know, and is that bad? I don't know, but is that the vibe I'm going for? No. So I'm going straight into the white, but I've got purple on my brush. I'm just going to give it some of this white, but it's still very purple. And it's feeling to me like we're coming up to an hour already of working on this, but let's just get this handle on my mug. And maybe what I'll have to do is I'll finish this and you can always just 
tune out. I hope you don't, but I understand it's getting long. But what I've got left to do, at least right now, is I want to do some more. I want to do some more on here. I've got to come up with some kind of a pattern there. I mean, there's, there's a little bit to do here. The window, look at the window. What's going on there? I'm just adding a little more white to this mug. Okay. I'm liking the mug just fine. And I think I'm going to just take this brush. It's got a little purple. It's got a little of the great color. And I'm just going to add as if there's maybe some little flowers there. Okay. Now. I'm going to go in. This is going to be primarily water. So I've got this cobalt turquoise and I'm going to put a dot of that right into this white again. That is all I want. Just a dot. And I want a bigger brush. And let's put some of this water in. And I'm going to have to put some of the leaves back on top, which is fine. And I'm going to go low, and then some taller grasses can be on top. Okay, I like that fine. And I'm going to, oh, I can tell that is not clean. I'm getting nervous because I know you guys have been here a while, but... Like I said, I should just calm down and you guys can just tune in, tune out, whatever you want. I'm adding some of this emerald green to where I had emerald green and yellow. And I'm taking this same brush and this will be a different shade than what we had. And again, I can go over this windowsill again if I end up with grass growing out of the windowsill, which I probably will, but that's okay. If you can hear kind of motory sounds there. The lawn guys are here. So, and they're working in the rain. I always thought you couldn't cut grass in the rain, but what do I know? Nothing. I don't mind the white showing through here and there for some light maybe kind of playing but it can't be too much now I'm going to put some of this in between in kind of the white areas of this tree working around this 
candle holder. Mm -hmm. It's coming along. Do you feel like it is? I do. I definitely do. Now I want to add some of this out over the water. Need more yellow. I'm dunking into all kinds of spaces where I see some yellow. Yeah, I'm liking the texture that I'm getting. Okay, I'm feeling good about that. All right, I'm going to add some more color to this and I like this red and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add like a dot with a leaf like there there see what I'm doing that's my pattern Some of them look like they're heading that way. I think this looks summery and I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Needs a little more here. And then the red could be just barely showing there. You need some? You need some more? Yeah. Fine. Put a tiny bit there. Tiny bit there. Mm-hmm. That did a lot for me. I like that. Okay. Well... I'm going to tell you the truth. I feel like it's time to walk away. I'm not signing it. Let it rest. I do not have very much paint at all on here. And I'm just going to pitch it. Because round two, I am going to be using some different colors. So what will be in round two? Trimming out the bowl. Trimming out the cup kind of cleaning up the two candle holders, putting some um, folds in the drapes, and maybe a little bit outdoors, not really sure about that. Pattern, maybe, maybe not for this table. I hope you found this inspirational. I hope you found this educational. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I still have to add the spoon. Please consider liking, subscribing, I will see you in my next video. Bye.